Hello and welcome everybody, I am Socio Psycho, and today we look at Spate, created by AO Games with Mac and Linux support. Now this game has far exceeded my expectations and if you're looking at this review and saying, should I get this game, yes. That's it, that's all you need to know. But I'll go into more, don't worry. See, as somebody who lives their life very logically and very critically, I expect the best from everybody and nothing is perfect, but how can you make things better? And when you review video games and you see how many games fall short, how many games fail at simple mechanics, how many games just continuously again and again and again drop the ball, it's disheartening. But when you come across a game like this, and it does so much with so little, you say, this, this is why I do it. This is why I play games. This is why I do what I do. For you, it may be something else, but for me, this is for one. So ladies and gentlemen, spat. Let's go into the options menu. Now the controllers, you have access to a gamepad, if you wish to use that. And I've had a little bit of an issue with rebinding, but nothing you can't get around, but just be careful with that, it's very touchy. Not a huge issue, but one to be noted. Now, the other options pop up in a small window when you load up the game. It has your screen resolutions, which are wide and vary, and your graphic settings, but it's a screen slider and very beautiful art style. Your subtitles on and off, the purposes of this video, we'll turn them on. Now I'm going to start a new thing here because I want you to see the beginning little intro because I don't want to spoil anything for you in this video and I'm going to make sure I don't. But I want you to see this beginning video because the narration of this game is beautiful. So what this game is exactly is a platformer, but it also has small little puzzle aspects into it. Nothing that's overcomplicated, nothing that's really difficult to overcome, and there's only a few puzzles. But it's a narration as well. It progresses you forward with a story told to you, and I want you to understand and feel some of that narration from the beginning. So we'll jump into that to allow you to see some of that. That's me there, having that moment of regret that hits a man right before the ground hits him, right before death, when your bygones are really gone and you've made a thousand wishes for a different ending. Don't worry about me though, this is just a dream, a vision. It's been haunting me now for the past six months. As dark as this vision is, it wouldn't be much of a surprise to anyone that knows me, myself included. Perhaps you would agree. Here's my story. My name is Timothy Bluth. Here I am rowing towards the X Zone. A beaten man, a drunk, some say, with a dead daughter and an ex-wife who would rather me dead than alive. I'm a private eye, a sleuth. I was hired to track down Scott Denton, a wealthy businessman who was last seen heading this way. Why anyone would want to head to the X Zone is beyond me. I mean, I could see it back in the day, back when these islands were still normal, back when the sun still shone here, back before things went dark. Now, as you can clearly see for yourself, it has really good voice acting in a narrational sense, which accompanies you as you progress through the story, as this world. The platforming elements of the game are not that difficult at all, but before I jump into that, I want to state one more thing that I didn't go over in the options menu. When you come to the options menu, there is not a sound slider, so you'll have to change any sound issues you have via your desktop volume controller. I personally have not had an issue with the sound being too loud, but you may. And when we come to the music of the game, the music is beautiful. This is takes place in a steampunk world, but it twists. The world is twisted, and it's very, uh, I guess really the only way to state is, is odd. It is an odd world, but it's beautiful, and the music that accompanies it is just so perfect. 
it fits not only the theme of a steampunk world, but it also fits the fact of a psychological thriller. Not a horror, but a thriller. Um, like, think of like a, a murder mystery book that you've read in the past, and you're like, who's the killer? What's happening? Why did he do this? What's going on? And it has these elements about it. Now, as you've seen on the screen already, as me going through this dialogue with this robot, there are a couple areas where you have dialogue with certain situations, and it feels the writing is very flushed out. Everything makes sense. Everything propels you further down the road. It is beautifully well-written game, and it stays true to the atmosphere. Now, in the game, I've had times where I've laughed just gut-busting. I've, I've laughed at myself because of some of the dialogue. I laugh because I've died from my failure in platforming. And just as much as I've laughed, I've been propelled and grabbed in by this world to continue playing, to keep seeing what's beyond the next ridge. How will the story progress? What happens? Now, I will say that the unfortunate part of this game is that it is only about two hours to three hours long, depending on how fast you are. But it's still a very good game. The atmosphere of the world draws you in more and more, and it puts you in a perspective that you might not be used to. The way the camera continues to rotate in different aspects, angles itself, and it continues to move out at the appropriate times, to move in, to change angles from the way you look at your character, as well as the environment can block you from actually seeing your character at times. Not abusively, and it's because you have this environmental aspect immediately put in your face, making you feel like the world does exist and it is real in concept. Now, it's never done this in the sense of abusing you when you have to jump over things to a point of you know, annoyance or anything else. It adds a level of depth that you would not expect before because it makes you feel more like you're being led on an adventure rather than you're in control. And this is done very beautifully. The settings and the background, the entire atmosphere acts as a lullaby with the music and the degree of the platforming. It doesn't just start out as super hard. It has really easy elements of platforming, a couple really easy puzzles, and then it gets to about a medium platformer. As experienced platformers go, you shouldn't have any issues with this, or if you're not experienced, you shouldn't have any trouble doing platforming. But the thing that is most amazing about it is how it will grab you in. The music will warm you over, will captivate you. You'll begin to get almost a sense of hypnoticness in the game. You'll feel more in tone with how the music plays with the visualization, the background, the colors, the lighting, and it all seems and pulls you right on in. And right when you're in there, and it wraps around you, and you're like a lullaby, bam, it kills you. It's beautiful. And it doesn't kill you from mechanical abuse. It doesn't kill you from unfairness. It kills you because you became complacent. Because you felt so comfortable, so interested in other aspects of the environment, so warm and secure by the atmosphere that you basically just kill yourself by running into stuff or falling off stuff or whatever. It is an impressive game, even if it is a short one. Now, there are issues with everything, and one issue I do hope it gets patched that I found is there are orbs in the game that you jump on. These orbs propel you forward through a slight distance, as you jump through this atmosphere, if you double jump, or sometimes not even, when you land, you will die immediately. Now, this issue is about, I'd say, 20% of the time. It's not enough that it, when it does happen, it seems unfortunate, but it doesn't happen enough to really break you from your gameplay. What does break you from the gameplay is when one of those orb counters don't work at all, and I've had this issue now and again. But despite these few issues and flaws I found in the game, the game itself pulls together so well and so beautifully that you find times that you're laughing because 
of a dialogue, or you're laughing because you died, and other times you're feeling an emotional connection with a character through the very well written cutscenes upon where you're talking to a robot or some other creature. Now, the character has weight. When you're moving, you feel heavy or you feel sluggish at times. It depends on the atmosphere that it chooses to put you in. When you're flying through the air, you feel as if you're weightless, but also limited in how you move. When there are parts where it feels like you're swimming and the atmosphere brings all of those parts together. And all of this mixed in with the environment, mixed in with the story, mixed in with the music, it all helps to lower your guard. It helps to disorientate you and draw you in even more. The shadows and lighting effects in this game are done very well and very beautifully. It draws you in with the lighting, the shading, the story, and the music. It is synchronized together beautifully. Ladies and gentlemen, hands down, get this game. It is worth your time. Thank you for watching. I've been Socio Psych.